Bolger with Premier Guitar. I'm with Justin Johnson in his cigarette lair in Nashville and uh, in this wonderful, I don't know, wonderland of guitardom. <laughs> thanks for having us, man. Hey, man, thanks for coming. Good yeah. to meet you, brother. Yeah, God, I love your work. I've been watching you for, for years now. Awesome. So Likewise. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, tell me everything. Let's, uh, let's start. Let's start with this guitar and what you came in playing. Um, yeah, so this guitar is, um, ever since I got this guitar, it's uh, built by a company called Wild Customs in France, and it's called the Gyrock. And uh, it's sort of like, I've played several modular guitars over the years, um, uh, like a dozen, but this one is like, has actually six pickups, six uh, separate pickups you can play in it. So, you know, like on the bridge pickup alone, got that, that humbucker there, got the, um, the Billy Gibbons, uh, you know, mini humbucker there. Right. Um, uh, the old uh, Strat, like a hot, like kind of a Texas Special kind of Strat pickup. So you can do, just go through the different tones and, and then, um, you know, pop them out the back and also just change them whenever you want to. And so um, I think I've got about 20 or 30 different pickups um, wired into these compartments. And honestly, I'd say like as far as especially in the studio, um, I think I've played this on almost every recording I've, uh, I've done since uh, I've gotten it. So it... You know, one of the things I love about it is just that it it sounds like the guitars you're trying to emulate, I guess. And right. then being able to do it on the fly is something that is just uh, awesome in the studio. You don't have to go, you know, I like kind of running around and grabbing different <laughs> guitars. But honestly, especially when you're in someone else's studio and someone's paying for studio time, anything like that, or if you're just feeling creative, you can just instantly change tones and be like, that's the tone I want, you know, it's, it's like... Um, go with the bridge pickup. You like that thin sort of single coil sure. tone, like that kind of twangy bridge. So. Then you can switch it up to let's say the uh, the humbucker there, the mini humbucker. Yeah. Like that, you know, twangy rock kind oh, of sound. So cool. That humbucker. And then it's got the two volume knobs, so you know you get on those middle positions and it's kind of endless. <laughs> and it's so cool. Watched, yeah. I love it. Yeah, and it's you know it's built like a tank also, and like it's got the uh, you know um, mahogany body, maple top. You know, it's got that kind of classic combination of tone woods that just really sings, and it's just uh, man, I love it. Oh yeah, uh, it's kind of like a guitar collection in one guitar, you know. Right. Well, and actually, and you showed before we started rolling. Oh yeah, and the, the ammo box yeah. over there. Yeah. Justin showed me this before we rolled. This whole thing is loaded with more pickups. Just yeah, you know, vintage ones. I got like a, a, a lap steel, uh, kind of like a classic lap steel bridge pickup there. Uh, I can turn it into like a telly if I want, turn it into a Strat, go vintage, wow. like high output. You know, and, it's, um, it's really interesting how, how, you know, you get into, people talk about tone woods and all that stuff and body shape, but it's cool to see just what pickups sound it's, like. It's, you know, I've learned more about what pickups sound like on this guitar than I ever, uh, ever right. knew, you know, because you kind of are stuck with the pickups on it. You can change them, but yeah. by the time you've changed a pickup out on a guitar you love, you kind of forgot what the last one even totally. sounded like yeah, accurately, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, even if you have recordings, it doesn't, yeah. It, yeah. It's, I'll switch out pickups and I'll think, is this an upgrade or a downgrade? I don't know. And then the amp's different maybe, the settings are different. The right. Amps sound different on different days, so, yeah. you know, sometimes the tubes yeah. get different ages and totally. you can just never tell. And so it, it's helped me also with other guitars that I've, um, you know, gotten since this one. I kind of know I want these pickups on it or something <laughs> because I know that those pickups are going to give me, you know, like a, a nice sound, like... Yeah. There's one that surprised me. I'd never tried. It was like single coil um, Seymour Duncan, like quarter pound single coils. They have the really big magnets. Yeah. Those things just sound killer. I've never tried those before, oh. but um, in blind taste tests, those beat out almost anything. Um, really? Yeah. That's a cool way to do it. I mean, yeah. that's the ideal way to know what it sounds like. And you're, just for the record, uh, he's in standard tuning right now. Man, you were a master of slide with standard tuning. <laughs> that's, a, that's how I learned, you know, and I think it was kind of laziness or stubbornness at first. I didn't really want to learn a new tuning. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it also um, 
help me start incorporating my fingers into the slide playing. Like um, at first, I'd kind of like pick up those kind of Almond Brothers, uh, you know, riffs, uh, and kind of figure out how to move those like open E or open D tunings yeah. into standard. You know, like those three strings. Like that little yeah. chord fragments, but then you know, just running, running the other fingers in there. It just has so much you can do, you know. Right, and it's it's in the practicality of it. Exactly. You're yeah. Just, you're you can you can go between that and whenever without tuning or yeah like we were talking about before yeah. we started you know it's like just retuning on on stage or you got a double neck you know you oh, got to get like a double right. neck with two different tunings on it or something like that and uh it can just ruin the show or you're waiting uh, waiting on the next song to start you know right. what i mean and All so right. yeah standard especially when you're playing with bands and you don't maybe have a solid set list yeah. you don't know it's like those are the only bands i've ever played with you right. know, where we have a set list and then ignore it the rest of the show right. you know and so you can't i'm going to pull out my uh, open e guitar yeah and then uh, <laughs> yeah right something right. like that but well that's very cool then let's look at you've got i don't know you've got a ton of guitars here but let's uh i wish we had seven hours to cover all of them but let's uh let's move yeah. on to a couple more well i'll tell you my favorite i guess like people ask me sometimes oh thanks with uh, how many guitars i have like if i if there was a fire and i had to pull one out you know yeah. or something i'll grab that one right here this is the house on fire guitar yeah yeah and um ideally i'd grab the case too because it has a pretty <laughs> badass case that comes with it but yeah. this one um was actually a, a gift to me from uh, my wife Nikki when we, we first met. Uh, um, she, she got me this. She knew nothing about guitars and somehow picked like cosmically my favorite guitar ever. And huh. So this was their uh, 60th anniversary um, telly and it's pretty much, to my knowledge, like their best um, uh, copy of the original Telecaster design. So it's right. like a brand new vintage, like, uh, you know, uh, brand think, new like, black early guard. 50s kind of telly. And, um, and it sounds like that, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a good, like, um, I, I especially love this with like a, an open E tuning and just getting that real kind of, make like that blues that's sad, but it makes you feel really good, you know? And, <laughs> right. and getting a little kind of grit on it and uh, on, the, on the bridge pickup too, especially like. play great that's that's so cool and it's got the that there's something about that maple like high gloss uh feel of the neck i, I just like you can just uh own it you know it right. doesn't fight you on anything and the radius is a little extreme for slide sometimes if i'm doing all six strings but um you right. know um you're just tilting it and it's got high enough action um and i like thicker strings on it especially in the bass notes and get that kind of nashville sound what gauge do you usually run on a, on a guitar i've got a couple uh signature packs through uh ghs and um it's like i can never remember that's like a, <laughs> i got my own pack so i wouldn't have to remember you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. but um uh it's usually like um i keep I, I, on the i have a slide guitar set which i think the bass is always around 50 and it's, it's close Beefy. to like 50. Yeah, I really like a, a thick bass string and then get a little lighter on the high strings, you know, yeah. so the whole pack does, isn't fighting you, but you get, you can swat those low strings and they won't go sharp or start wobbling, getting a yeah. lot of fret buzz. Cause I do a lot of uh, detuning also, like down to uh, especially D, open G, open D tuning, but sometimes I'll go down even to uh, C sharp or C sometimes. And the, the strings being thick enough aren't going to ruin the sound of it and ruin the intonation. So. Right. But then um, my, my slide guitar set, I uh, focus on balancing the tension between all of the strings so that you get the same amount of pushback, um, you know, whether you're on the high E string or whether you're on the G string. They're all kind of pushing back even so you're not 
fretting out accidentally. And then the, um, the standard set is just a little bit lighter on the unwound strings so that you're, you're just kind of breezing around. You can bend however you want, but you still get a decent amount of sustain. And so I think it's a, I think it's a 10 on the high E yeah. for my standard set and then it's an 11 on the high e for my slide guitar set kind of evens out sure. between the 50. yeah go yeah, well, that sounds fabulous well, that is a that is the perfect telecaster tone oh i love it yeah and just the the natural the the ash body you know yeah. and the uh, black pit guard isn't it amazing how, how leo got it right the first time it's awesome yeah it's like it's like kind of i don't know it, it's it's almost kind of mystical that he built this perfect guitar in 19, well, I guess 52 is the first year it came out, right? But they were shortly before then. In the comments, some of you nerds uh, correct me on whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, it is amazing that he just nailed it. Yeah, you know? and it's like we've been chasing it, small improvements ever since, you know? And yeah, like, and sometimes going the other direction. Exactly, it's yeah, you're just like, I got to patent something, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, let me, let me do something different, you know what yeah. I mean? But And I love that too, you know? I love adventurous guitar designs, but yeah. it's like something about this, though. It's like, God, you just can't beat it, you know what I mean? Well, and for the time, wildly adventurous. Venturesome, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, you know, just to bolt that thing together. You know. Yeah, and uh, the fact that it's such a factory right. tool. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, I broke my neck. Uh, it's like, <laughs> let me yeah. let me get a new neck. You know, oh. you you can't do that with every guitar. And uh, no, not that it makes a guitar bad if you can't, but I mean, it definitely makes it good if you can. You know. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> so great. I love it. Well, hey, let's see the next one on the uh, all right in the parade of many guitars. Awesome. Okay, so tell me about this one. So um, this one, uh, I call it the mystery, uh, the mystery resonator. And um, this was a, a, a gift from a buddy of mine, Jeff, um, who was a guitar collector, and he was kind of offloading some of his guitars. And um, uh, this was just one that I played in his collection that is just like, that is the best sounding, uh, coolest feeling resonator I, I had ever played. And uh, the, the mystery part of it is that someone, uh, previous owner at some point stripped all the paint off, all the finish. Who knows what right. it looked like when it was original, so there's right. no brand name on it. Um, it is, all I know is that it's very old. You can like tell it's old, it smells old, it feels right. old. And even look at the pitted fretboard. Oh yeah, Dev, you can see what chords and scales right. they used, whoever. Yeah, uh, that person big fan liked of D. Minor. D yeah, <laughs> they really like D minor. <laughs> but who doesn't, though? Yeah. Good taste, yeah. you know? And. Um, it's funny because like this is one of the guitars where like I don't even want to change the strings on. The strings are kind of like green at this point, pretty <laughs> nasty. Uh, but um, there's something about the sound and just the feel. It, it's like uh, I, you know you like singers that have like that cigarette smoking voice or something. Yeah, this has yeah. kind of that quality. And yeah, let's hear this thing. <laughs> That's great, dude. Uh, this is back porch. Yeah, uh, you know. I love it. Do you ever play with picks or always your fingers? You know, I've got a, um, I've got a signature thumb pick, which, uh, let's see, got one right here. And um, I love these. They're, um, they're made by a company called Strum and Comfort, and it's, uh, it's like a hybrid thumb pick, so it's got a kind of a cloth with Velcro that straps it onto your thumb. But then it's just a flat pick. It's not like a, a full plastic wraparound, because I always... Yeah. I always lost those when I'd strum up sure. and they'd go flying and, and yeah. land on someone's table or something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, these ones you can do like a full strum. Oh. You definitely get a, a more of a bite and more of an attack, you know, especially with that percuss, uh, percussive style. But then you can actually play them like a flat pick too, which is nice. Just 
really easy to control, and, and I've never had one fly off and hit someone's baby or <laughs> hit someone's <laughs> right, right, right. And, right. A it, drink. <laughs> it's so cool, though, and to hear the tone difference between your thumb and the pick. Like, it, oh, it yeah. changes everything, man. Absolutely. Both cool. But, you know, different, different. Now, what are you doing electronically here? So um, on this one, I've got a, it's a company that uh, I love their pickups. They just do great custom pickups, real uh, low profile. So uh, these are all stuck on with like sticky tape. So I don't yeah. have to like cut into the guitar. I've got some, some tape down there yeah, for the well, wire. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, that's some real craftsmanship. Oh, there, thank Justin. you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can hardly tell it's there. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. So uh, yeah, I've got this, it's 12 bar blues, um, and it's a humbucker too, so it's nice and quiet. You don't get a lot of that right. single coil noise. Um, I've got the, uh, an X5 wireless system, which I use a lot, basically because I, I didn't ground this one. You can ground them, they come with a grounding wire, but I just slapped this one on before uh, recording something with it. And uh, what I like to do generally when I record, especially uh, resonators, I like to have a mic, like this is my favorite acoustic and resonator mic, the uh, ELA uh, 260 uh, from uh, Telefunken, and it's a tube mic, it just sounds like what you hear basically. Um, yeah. And uh, then I also like to take like a direct signal so that I can fatten it up and just, sometimes I don't even use what comes from the uh, pickup, but I like having it there. And then sure. if I get dirty, I'll, um, I'll use the pickup to get dirty, run it through an amp, overdrive it. And so a lot of the, like, um, you know, like the, I recently did a lot of like uh, the film work where they wanted resonator tones, but they also want it dirty. And instead of recording two different parts, I'll record a mic like this, send them the dry one, and then say, if you want it dirty, here's the dirty version of the right. same exact riff on the same exact guitar. It'll sound like an electric though, plugged into an amp. And so that, uh, and then you can mix them together, which is cool. Or yeah. have a part of the song later in the mix where you decide I like a acoustic uh, intro and then I want to get dirty when the chorus comes or something like that so you have the option to play with all of those. Yeah, very cool. Uh, what what tune are you in right now? Uh, this is uh, Open E. Okay. Or maybe it's Open D, I'm not sure. It's, a, well, open. it's the same thing yeah. really, it's just uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a whole step apart. Yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, God, it sounds great. <laughs> oh yeah, it just, just feels good. It's got that real deep, um, feel that ne back of that neck, oh, yeah. the real deep V. God. And um, I don't even know if it has a truss rod, so it's it's probably just thick right. to hold the tension. Yeah, that wood's not moving. Yeah, that no, is no. So, is it hasn't like moved in 80 years. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like yeah. a telephone pole. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay, man. All right. It's going to be a tough one to beat, but let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next up is uh, this uh, Dreadnought Acoustic from uh, Furch Guitars, and it's the, from their Green series. And um, they reached out to me. Um, uh, I'd never played one of their guitars. I'd seen them before, and when they sent this to me, uh, they, they sent me a, a few others to try out. It was like, you know, damn, like, <laughs> this is like, you know, I've never, never really played a guitar like this. They've, they've in, they invented a lot of things, really kind of, um, it's one of those new companies that does have something new and, and really it's like, I, I wish a lot of other companies would develop these, uh, these things, but I, well, they probably patent them, so a lot of other companies can't. But right. <laughs> like the finish on this is just, um, it's, it's like the strongest finish, one of the thinnest finishes too. And I think that they tried for years working on different formulas with chemists and stuff to come up with a kind of a new guitar finish that would resonate um, but be very hard, and it actually, I think, adds to the resonance, it's so hard. Wow. But I beat, I beat the hell out of this guitar, and there's not a ding on it, you know? And usually, I'll have a ding on a guitar after about two minutes or something, Sure. You know? And um, And then the, they're also, they're, the balance is different. They've got an internal block here that's, um, I think, aluminum that prevents the bowing right here where in it meets the, the body. In the neck? In the neck block, yeah. So wow. there's, a, there's like a whole screw system a carbon fiber rod that protects the truss rod and so you don't get bowing in different spots when the truss rod starts getting old because that carbon fiber like helps to distribute the there's just a lot of like cool engineering involved but when you play it though it's just like it's so open and it's so active and, and resilient and so i'm running this actually i've got an ab on my pedal board i guess we'll talk about that later but um instead of running to the electric amp um, i can flip it and run it to the fishman loud box which i love using for my acoustic amp Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just sings. I love yeah. it. And you said they're from the Czech Republic. Czech Republic, yep. Um, and I, I think the uh, it's a cool story, you know, behind the the original. I guess the father, who's uh, kind of a family business, but he started building guitars. I guess when it was uh, a communist country, and it was illegal to build guitars. Like you could go to jail or you know, like prison for it. It was like a serious offense. So wow. he was taking apart old pianos and using the wood to build guitars and just building these amazing guitars and, and hiding, basically. Uh, really? And so when, when um, I guess that country, um, you know, I, I don't know a lot about the politics of it other than what I've heard with the stories from Furch, but um, when they were allowed to start a company, actually, um, he was way ahead of the curve, you know, and, and he had already been building guitars, so he had, he had the knowledge, and um, now they're the huge, you know, got an awesome factory, huge factory, and I think they're just, uh, celebrating their 40th anniversary this year so wow but yeah so if you ever see one of these you know at a guitar store or something uh check it out i mean it's it's really cool and i feel great yeah that's beautiful i've never i've never heard of this company before love it though so spruce top was it a mahogany back and it's a uh, rosewood rosewood, rosewood yeah. back and sides on this wow and they've got a ton of uh different models like they're they're uh types of guitars are set up like the visible light spectrum and so it goes from, uh, I think, violet to, uh, I don't know, the visual, like, yeah, yeah. Roy G. Biv, so yeah, whatever yeah. that is, violet to uh, red. Yeah. And, um, and then they have a rainbow series, which is their custom series. So you can take any of the, on their website, you can design it and take any of the features of any of their guitars, basically put them all together. And you could have nine strings, uh, 12 strings, baritones. Um, they've got a, the travel guitars, these tiny ones that, uh -huh. that sound killer. But um, yeah, they're, oh, they're, cool. they're mean. Oh, All right. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, let's try another one. All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the next one here is of course my uh, signature shovel guitar. And this one is, uh, it's funny because I've, I've sold so many of these, built so many of them. And um, uh, after, you know, I did a kind of performance in my backyard with one. Right, um, right. And that's, I, that, I think everybody, everybody's seen that. <laughs> it got like, crazy like uh, you know it's funny because it was just like off the cuff that that video and, and yeah. just making it up on my back porch and yeah. uh, it got like you know 40 million views on Facebook alone right. after like a month or so and but we got so many requests for people wanting shovel guitars that I, I started building them and uh, never knew I was going to be like a, a shovel guitar builder or anything <laughs> like that but you know, I, I love it, and it's, it's stuff like this, too. I'll get into some of the uh, homemade instruments that I, I play a lot of and, and build. But it's just the art of it and learning, like, the essence of what a guitar is, you know, right. what, it, what it has to have to be good and what it doesn't have to have to be good, you know, and, yeah. and also how to play just, just strings and how to kind of make up your own rules. And I think that's what's beautiful about something like this. But um, oh, get into the story, you know, I've actually never... Uh, owned my own like I would end up like you know making a living on the road I'd sell the ones I had on the road at my last gig or something and go back home and and build more and so I never actually had one that was like mine that I played all the time and so uh, this one I decided I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep one finally and uh, I, I was uh, contacted on I think Instagram or something by this artist in Greece who's a tattoo artist uh, named Achilles and he wanted to paint a shovel for me and oh, so great. I, I sent this to him it was a nightmare getting it there with customs because oh, they're like what is this thing you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean like uh, yeah. is it and so um but yeah he did an amazing job and then there was another company funny like contacted me on Instagram who wanted to build me a custom strap and uh we were like well can you match this guitar and uh so that's a Le Le rock skin straps in uh France oh. built this like all leather Strap. They even got the pickup on it. Look at that. Oh, that's so, so cool. So that it was. Just, it's like an optical illusion now. But um. Okay. Yeah. So, let's hear this. Yeah. Let's hear this thing. So it's got a uh, three strings. It's got a, a volume pedal. It's got a, a custom pickup that um, I helped uh, design um, and a volume knob. And so basically, it's a. It's like a power chord, a root fifth root, generally yeah. like an open G tuning. And like tempered steel sustains forever, which is nice too. Right.
man. That just sings. It does. It's, it's great. So can, how, how did it happen? I mean, how, did, how did you decide to do this the first time? Well, you know, um, at the time, uh, it was when my wife, uh, Nikki, and I were living on the road full time. And um, a lot of what I played were, were homemade instruments. And uh, I started playing a few. And eventually, people started coming out to shows and just bringing me stuff they built in their garage. And, and I'd play it on stage, you know, like pretty much no matter what it was. I would, I would, if someone brought something they built, I would play it on stage. Fearless. And um, I bet there were some bad experiences, some bad... Well, you know, it's like you got to learn how to like one-string instruments with like really hot piezo pickups. Yeah. It's like, you know, you got to kind of come up with something right. and, and make it entertaining. But, you know, that's what a lot of those, like my, my early blues, like heroes did, you know, sure. with like homemade, you know, like Bo with these crazy instruments he built totally. and and just the tradition of it and I think that's kind of like what slide guitar is about too is right you don't need frets you need like ideally if you, you don't even have fret markers and you, you don't need them if you can listen to it you know yeah. and, and learning to play like that I think trial by fire with all of these people coming out and bringing these instruments uh, had to learn how to come up with tunings on the fly for different instruments right. um, run things through an amp and amplify it without crazy feedback and different things like that and um, um, no one ever grounded their instruments, and so luckily, right. like with wire, like wireless systems, I realized you never have to ground an instrument if you're going wireless, and so that that wasn't an issue. But uh, a guy named Roger Berry brought out a shovel guitar that he built, and um, that was the one I played in that original video. And yeah. so um, he gave that guitar to me after that that show I was playing, I think, at the Juke Joint Festival in uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi, uh, when he brought that one out to me, and. Um, you know, like, uh, and it's happened with a few different instruments and a few different people who've done that, uh, where, um, you know, I'll play something, put out a video, and then they'll, they'll thank me later, you know, and it's like, uh, like with the, the ammo can uh, right. guitar, you know, um, just getting a lot of people turned on to a cool new idea and a cool new design and a new way to look at guitars and... You know, again, it's like it's like minimalist art too. You know, and yeah, it's, it's I love just it. beautiful. It's like um, you've seen the the movie This Might Get Loud with. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. That first scene where Jack White just, you know, he 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 nails a couple uh, strings to a board, and it sounds like Jack White. That's it, all you. That's all you need. You know, yeah. and if you can, and if you can make music with that when you pick up a guitar. It's a lot easier when you break a string. You just play on one. <laughs> you right. play on the one that's in tune, you right, know. And right. then, or or uh, you learn how to think on the fly like that, and you also learn how to play up and down the fretboard instead of in patterns, you know. And you start start stop thinking about patterns as much, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's an interesting thought on on particularly on slide guitar, like that really singing voice. I think that's kind of where that came out of. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. And all those patterns on the scales, they start making more sense. It's kind of like, I think with piano, you think linear, linearly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why a lot of, uh, you know, when you learn music theory, you have to learn piano because you can see it in a straight line. And on guitar, I think what's easy about it is you can be visual about it and have these patterns and you know you change from A to B all you have to do is move the pattern up a whole step um, but you might not be thinking about intervals as much or you know about mm -hmm. the the scales and, and the way they repeat because you're thinking about them as, as six six string patterns you know right right it, and it, I, it, it tends to be it's almost like a cut and paste thing yeah yeah know? exactly uh -huh. whereas just like paint by numbers or something right, you know? right. <laughs> Whereas with that, you're just like whatever the melody it goes. The melody goes where it goes. Yeah, yeah, in a, in a different way, totally. And then when you go back to six string, it's like, I'm gonna, I'm tuning this string down. And like I want this string here and this string here, and you start just thinking about it like six strings, or like six instruments, you know, and they each sound different. Yeah. And and you just make them all do what you want for whatever song. And I, that's how I approach like solo guitar arrangements a lot. Is I think like. Um, I think of the bass strings as like a male singer, uh, and the unwound strings as sort of like a female singer. And yeah. so when you're you're playing and arranging, you can have like a duets. You can have different call and response parts, and you start to learn the sound of each string in a different way. It's that's nice. a really cool way to look at it. That's great, man. Okay, we got to see. Now that's gonna be a tough one to break. <laughs> well, we, had, we were working on pe uh, puns before this. I was thinking, really dig that tone, and Justin said. <laughs> Groundbreaking. That was my favorite <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Can't beat it. <laughs> uh. Groundbreaking. <laughs> okay.
What is this thing? All right, this is, it looks wood, it looks like it's wooden from a distance, but it's actually a metal bodied. It's a uh, vintage Dobro Duolian. Oh, and um, it's got the, the biscuit, uh, biscuit bridge here. And um, this one, I love, there's like this, I always call it like, like dark blues or like dark swamp blues. Yeah. Um, but it, it just has this sound that just immediately just kind of makes you stop, especially like I love this guitar in D minor tuning. So um, it'd be like D, A, D, F, A, D. And so when you just strum it, you can just hear. Right. And then, uh, you know, this. resonates sometimes people you know I've, I've had a lot of people comment that they don't think that like metal body uh, resonators have as much bass but this one particularly it just mm, just really right booms it out I love it yeah okay so what what pickup are you using it? um this one this came on it um, it's a lace sensor pickup one of their resonator pickups hmm. and um, you know again I guess that's why they also because I haven't changed I don't change strings hardly ever <laughs> unless I really need to or or if, if I just need the sound of uh, new strings, but it's got some um, electric strings on it. So sometimes I like electric strings with like a resonator anyways. Um, I find I'll use my slide guitar pack a lot, and especially because um, I'm not a big fan of piezo pickups on resonators. They can get a little hot. I'd much rather mic a resonator live if I want like a mic sound. Yeah. Um, but usually I'll, I'll just have a magnetic pickup um, for, right. for all the resonators and you plug it into a clean tube amp, like that's what I've got it now plugged into the um, Hughes and Kettner Triamp. And then I've also got the, uh, the mic in front of it to kind of blend those two together. But- um, God, it sounds great. And yeah. this one you can really tell, like I was talking about how I, I like to arrange the kind of like think about the strings as different people and how the unwound strings I think of as like a female vocalist. and the wound string I think of as a male vocalist and like if it could do it with this guitar is especially good like so that'd be like the female on the high E string and then the male and then a duet <laughs> Yeah, Justin, I really dig that. I, you know, gear, I know we all love gear, but gears, unless you get cool ideas, don't really mean anything. And that's really, those are just great ideas. Yeah. I, I love that, man. Well, I get so many of my ideas from the gear. And I, it's kind of like, right. um, I think most of the songs I write are, are written like by me and the guitar, you know? And sure. I can never, I've, I've never liked forcing a song out of a guitar. If, if it doesn't come in the first 30 seconds, if I'm in the studio, you know, I'll, I'll switch guitars if like the tone isn't right. Except like like that gyro, you know, with yeah. the, the switchable pickups. That's what I like about it is it's like, I can usually get the tone I want in about 30 seconds with that one. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's so much better to just get the gear that does the song easily or, or gets the sound easily sure. than to, to force it out. Let it inspire you. Exactly. Yeah. So um, do you have any idea what year this is? I don't know. Um, but old-ish, right? Old-ish, yeah. I'm, I'm, I do not know. I don't know how to read the serial numbers yeah. on these that well, you know, um, but, and I like the, uh, it's got that, uh, the moon and star. I love uh, that. Cover. It's got a very flat um, yeah, that uh, is... cover too, so it, it's really ergonomic. It, mm -hmm. it plays like an acoustic a lot. Yeah, some of those with a real high arch are very awkward. You gotta kinda like, I have to do this and kinda get my hand going a right. lot more down. The muting and, thing yeah, is yeah, really palm, weird. I'm, I palm mute a lot, and so I've had to kinda learn how to palm mute a yeah. little past that, yeah. that cover. Just 
ruins your palm muting if, <laughs> you, if you're used to it one way, you know. Right. But um, well, that sounds great, man. Okay, yeah. let's let's look let's at another going. one. All right. So this next one is um, this is actually um, one of the most recorded guitars that I have. So um, I've I've probably recorded more songs and parts with this guitar than just about any six string electric or acoustic that I've got. And it's just, it's one of the first uh, cigar box guitars I ever played. It's built by uh, a guy named Richard Brantley, who uh, is a good friend of mine, and um, helped me uh, fix the RV a few times when we were on the road, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I needed to help change the floor in my RV. But he, can, he, he has about every tool and has the knowledge. He used to be a treasure hunter. And so, like, um, any, anything you ask him, he pretty much knows how to fix or do. So. He helped us out a lot on the road, but he started building guitars, and they're some of the best cigar box guitars I've ever oh. played, and they're so simple, and um, he owns a farm, too, uh, and he's really, like, tapped into, I think, the original concept of what makes, uh, like, the soul of homemade instruments, you know, and that's one of those things that I love about these instruments is how good they can sound, first of all, out of, out of like, found materials. Like, this is a cigar box. This is a hand-hammered... Um, Tin can is like a green bean can oh, wow. that, that he turned into a resonator. It's got a little um, uh, disc piezo that's that's hot glued inside a beer bottle cap for the uh, the pickup, you know. But it's like when you plug it in, it, you can just tell it's like it's got so much soul. sounds like you know i don't know, like pre-war delta blues but it, yeah it's kind of like a banjo kind of like a resonator it, yeah kind of like a banjo it's so amazing and it's it's so cool to think about people that like on the delta that didn't have anything yeah poor poor but they just they just found a way but they had killer music in their yeah, heads you know it's yeah. like uh they, and, and yeah they had music they, that they had to it. get out yeah had to get out Man, it's so it's it's just beautiful, and that that sounds great, man. And again, like uh, just I, I've toured with this so much, you can see all these all the all the marks on it. You know, there's yeah. no finish; it's just beat up, but it's it's never failed me. It never feeds back live. It's so weird. I Shocking. played it on the loudest stages, and not a not a hint of. I guess it's all the hot glue in that pickup. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's pretty weird, there's you your, know. There's your pro tip. It's like use, more, <laughs> use, use lots of hot glue. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I played in the sun in Texas in the summer. It didn't even melt the hot glue yeah. too. They used that high high uh, temperature hot glue. And, hey, and, now, is that your that's your signature slide, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is um, uh, stoneware ceramic, um, uh. and uh, Jim Dunlop makes these. Uh, yeah. So, they, uh, it's, it's killer, and it's a special type of ceramic, too, that uh, I think it's like stoneware porcelain or something like that. Yeah, but it, it's kind of like Kev Moe's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, the same woman makes them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, um, but man, I, I love ceramic because you get the, sustain is more like metal, but the weight and the surface is more like glass, so you get a smooth kind of glassy surface. Yeah. But um, glass slides, especially on acoustic, I, I never get the sustain I want out of a glass slide right. unless it's like a shot glass or something that's right. just really, really thick. Yeah, I think the Corsine bottle is really made for like a Les Paul. It's made for a Les Paul with Marshall amps, yeah. you know, with like, it's made for... Brother like, Dwayne basically set the uh, You don't, <laughs> you don't need sustain on anything if you've no. got the Les Paul and the, uh, and the yeah. stacks going, yeah. yeah. You could use a, a toothpick and it would <laughs> like sustain like crazy, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, but, but with uh, that, it just sings, yeah. man. And I love, again, the, the super dead acoustic strings. They sound so desperate, you know? Uh. Right. Weird. Uh, it's forcing the notes out, you know? There's something <laughs> about that that I like, too. And you're right. It's very banjo-y, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's got this weird, this bridge is just like a, a little rod of metal, and so the, you hear it, 
You hear I a know. lot of those weird artifacts that yeah. pop through. <laughs> what I love, I love the way the uh, strings are attached, just yeah. in the most seemingly arbitrary way. You can see, you can see my after <laughs> aftermarket grounding job where I, I tied a, <laughs> a wire oh, yeah. and taped it around to one of those. Uh, Top yeah. notch. <laughs> if you ever need any guitar work, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just let yeah, me know. I could, yeah. You could have the same quality. <laughs> no problem. Oh, that's great. All right, man. Let's look at one right. more. Okay. What is this thing? So this one, I'm saving the best for last here in a sense, like, or at least the newest for last. Uh, this is, just got this guitar. Uh, a few days ago, actually, and I've been waiting for it since Christmas. So. Did they but, um, drag it behind the delivery truck? Is that <laughs> a, is that it was supposed to be shiny. <laughs> yeah. They suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really yeah I should have filed a claim. I could have gotten my money back for it, you know? But um, yeah, this is from Wild Customs too, the same company that made the uh, Gyro guitar. And um, I always love this style, you know, it's called their uh, Fire Wild. Um, oh, and it's kind of it. like a Firebird, uh, kind of like, like, yeah, what was the guitar Ice model wing? you guys were yeah. talking about? But, uh, and um, this is uh, the first electric that I've ever gotten just um, from the ground up, uh, sent in a mock-up I did on Photoshop of all the, all the little features I wanted, um, the wiring I wanted, the pickups I wanted, the binding, the inlay, everything uh, is, is exactly like I wanted it to be. And... Um, it's just, it's so nice, it's perfect, it's, it, and it looks old. I love, I love not being, uh, not shedding a tear for the first scratch. No, so I just right. had them, uh, they do a great job with the aging, the cosmetics. Yeah. Um, and it's got three Filtertrons. I love Filtertron pickups. And um, it has, uh, not only does it have the three pickups, but it has a six-way toggle. And so you can get basically every combination of the pickups. You can get, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so you can, wow. you can uh, really get those combos. But then it's got a coil uh, split, too. So I can turn them all into single coils. So I can go humbucker or single coil, and I get six options with either one. So it can sound a lot like a Strat on the single coil uh, setting. Or it can sound like um, more of, you know, a beefy kind of like Gretsch. Uh, you can get some kind of less Paul tones, just about anything you want. Yeah, hey, flip and, through um, a couple. I yeah, hear definitely. This. So you can hear it gets a little quieter on the single coil setting. It's got great sustain. Yeah. Love it, man. So that's the neck. Let's go more like the bridge. A little more of that kind of honky middle sure. tone, though not too bright. And I love it's got the five speed. <laughs> yeah. And then flip it on single. And swat the strings. That's just totally clean, you know, if I yeah, give it a it. little more uh, attitude. Yeah. Let's see. Do a little dancing. Sure. <laughs> Segues nicely into your pedal board talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's talk about this because you've you've been doing a little dancing down here uh -huh, on yeah. your uh, on your rig. So on your electric rig, what do you what are you doing? You're running out of the guitar into. Yeah. So first, I guess like the overview is um, 
I like having a, a lot of options. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? And, and yeah. so um, clearly, whether yeah, <laughs> whether it's um, like I, I like not having to shuffle things around too much or change things. Like if I'm going to a, a studio session and, and space is an issue, yeah, you know, I don't want to bring this pedal board set up necessarily um, and, and take up half the studio. But um, I I've got this this pedal board recently. The actual components of the the metal parts, the board itself, from a company called Morton Pedal Board. And it's all modular, so you can screw it together oh, cool. and um, basically expand the pedal board. Like if, if I wanted to, um, this part over here uh, with all the universal audio pedals on it, um, a lot of times I'll use that as my um, send and return on my amp. Okay. And so that's got all of the things you would normally have on the send and return, like the um, you know vibrato, echo, uh, reverb. And so um, I can just move that whole pedal board and it's uh, run off of these, um, uh, what's it? The power big, box, yeah. Yeah, the Big Joe uh, power box. So that's totally battery powered <sighs> and rechargeable. So I can just throw that anywhere I want and, and plug it in, move God. it back if I want it in the chain. The um, power box is so cool too. Uh, like go to Europe, no problem. No problem yeah. at all, yeah. And you never get you never get issues with uh, power really. You know? Yeah. Um, on the main pedal board, as far as power, I've got the uh, Gator cases. Um, that's a killer power supply. That's their Power 12. And what I like about that, not only it's it's big, it's got the li the light on it and everything. I mean, it sounds great. You don't get any interference or anything. Um, but it also has the 18 volt um, outputs, like for my my transformer pedal, the API pedal. Um, normally, I have to plug that in, and then that's when you have to deal with maybe some of the power issues because right. it's not coming from like isolated power. Um, so now I get the isolated power. I can still run the transformer, which I love and then still run all of my nine volt um, pedals. It's got the, um, the power drain, like, you know, to, to mimic an old battery, which I, I usually don't use that. I've tried it a, a few times and, and uh, haven't found the right pedals to use it on. I yeah. usually just go full throttle on those, but it's a nice option to have. And so yeah, let's well, okay. Let's start. Let's just kind of show your yeah. So I'll just start with nothing on so you yeah. can kind of hear things, too. And um, I'm running this all into the Hughes and Kettner um, Triamp Mark Mark okay. uh, Mark Three, and you've got a cab in the other room. Uh, Hughes and Kettner 212 cabinet yeah. um, in the other room, and um, I like the I like the Hughes and Kettner Triamp, and and also the Grandmaster 40, which is this one I would take on the road would be this one. Sure, it, it does a lot of the same stuff, but that's got um, I forget how many tubes that has in it, but it's basically like 42 tube amps. Oh my God! All analog, so you can you can switch between the power tubes. Um, you can switch the preamp tubes and, and mimic just about any amp you'd want. Totally analog though, so it's like an analog modeling amp. So right now I'm kind of in the clean California mode on the triamp. Yeah. But the first pedal is the Loud and Proud pedal from um, Mad Professor, and that is basically the exact wiring of like an old Marshall head um, in pedal form. And then it also has a really tasteful boost in front of it. And I use this almost always for just the boost. And so before the boost, with the boost on. Yeah, it just kind of wakes it up. Yeah, definitely. And I, it boosts a little bit of volume, but the clarity also punches out there. Mm -hmm. You get a little sustain. And it's not muddy. The, the bass comes out. Like, yeah, really subtle. You can push the tubes a little harder. Yeah. If I turn on the other, um, the main part of the pedal, that turns on the Marshall wiring. Right. And I've got quite a bit of gain dialed in, but you know, it's got all of the knobs you would normally see on a Marshall, and um, it just kind of gives you that. So you can turn what would be like more of a clean kind of fendery sound or something yeah. into more of that kind of crunchy, boxy, darker sound. Yeah, yeah. I dig that thing. Love it. And then I've got the uh, Archer pedal here. Love the um, Archer. Which again, I just kind of use as a, a different color boost. I, mm -hmm. I don't like, uh, I like the gain on it, but I like to dial that all the way back usually and just kind of use the tone of it. So here's without the Archer. <laughs> And then with it, yeah, it just wakes it up. It gives it a little bit different boost. So here's the Mad Professor boost. A little 
brighter, a little thinner, and then the archer. Yeah. So I just like that. And then I, I like the archer. The next one's the, the tube screamer. And uh, the tried and true. Yep. And I like the way that the archer sounds with the boost going into the tube screamer. It, it, it gets that kind of milkshake thick, sort of not over the top, but. <laughs> screamer without the archer so you can see how the archer brings the tube screamer to life yeah that's a great combination just uh not nothing going over the top but everything adding a little bit yeah this next pickup uh, or pedal um i've never heard of this company they're in russia actually and they reached out to me sent me an email um wanting to send me a pedal and it's like it's like uh one of my favorite distortions i've ever heard it's it's a company called advanced systems and it's adv dot systems and this is their um <clears throat> their hash hashtag overdrive pedal <laughs> and like i didn't know what <laughs> what it was going to come it came in a little brown box yeah and it's just killer like i love that for um like like rusty old blues kind of sound like i especially love it with um i mean it sounds good like this is this is just by itself with the uh overdrive pedal <laughs> Got a little fuzz, but it's yeah. it's kind of more controlled than a lot of fuzz. It's totally different than the other stuff you got. That's yeah. what I really like about it. Like, it's, let's say I add that Mad Professor boost, go to like the uh, bridge position, so like a single coil, then. Got the Dane Electro, that goes into the Dane Electro back top, which um, I love just for the, it, it's an echo where the echo is backwards. And so it just gives you that psychedelic. I love that it's dedicated just to weird sounds. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and I love doing like an intro or outro with that pedal, you know, or if, if you're just, you start a new set, you know, you come back after the set and there's nothing better than just like... Yeah. It's like, wake up the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's like, okay, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're starting the show. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm, I'm going to go out of order, but I love using the um, the plus pedal from uh, Game Changer Audio. Oh, right. With the, uh, the Dane Electro. Oh, let's too, hear so. this madness. So you can you can hold down the plus pedal and then just get your settings ready for the next thing. Right. You know what I mean? And then uh then when it's time to go into the next song, you got that pan then. Yeah. You know, it's like whatever you're gonna do next, uh you can just cue that up while you the know, plus pedal's doing its thing. As the whole like solo performer, you really have to work up things like that. Yeah, Because you're the whole show. And exactly. if it stops, yeah, that's it stops, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it stops. <laughs> uh -huh. And then um, after that, uh, back talk is the, the plasma pedal, also from Game Changer Audio. And uh, this is like, um, I use this a lot when I'm layering parts in the studio. If, I, if I'm doing a power chord or like doing, I want to thicken a part up, it's just. <laughs> just a, like atomic blast of, of sound and you don't even have to use your right hand you know. 
Well, and I know you can't see it. There's like a Tesla coil in the center. Yeah, of it yeah. Doing crazy. And I guess things. that actually, that the sound actually goes through that. Like it's not just a special effect. That's actually where the sound is passing through. I think in the pedal. Oh, that's and so great. It's like a car or headlight or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I can't look away. <laughs> Sounds like something. Yeah. Broke, yeah. 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 I think there's something wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> and I like layering stuff. Like when I when I'm doing like you know heavier music or layering something in the studio with heavier music. A lot of times the slide just like. Yeah. There's like yeah. weird, weird sound effects. That you do. Oh, it's a spooky it's sound. Like a, a theremin. It is a theremin. Yeah. Like layered in there, so you're like, what is that sound? So that's that's great for that. Very cool. I've got an Ibanez uh, DE7 delay echo, um, just because I have to have one of those on every pedal board. Sure. Um, it was like my first echo pedal, and uh, there's something about the sound that um, is just like this is the way I learned how to use an echo pedal, and and um, so whenever I want to control the echo on stage, like I use the uh, Universal Audio Echo for like my go-to sort of tape echo emulation. But for the down and dirty, yep. get it done. Get it it's done, old... turn the knob on stage when you need to, get certain effects and, yeah. it, and it feeds back well. You know, you can put it on the loop and get nice and nasty with it or you can just do a little uh, slap back with it. And... It's funny, delays are kind of like that. I mean, like you find one that, that you like know how to use yeah. and there might be better sounding stuff, but it's just... It's not gonna sound better if you don't use it as well. Right, yeah, right, yeah, you right, just have exactly. to know it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and then um, the uh, image looper from T Rex Effects, um, my, my favorite uh, loop pedal, because um, it's just two buttons, uh, yeah. start and stop. It's got a volume knob. This right. is how loud it is. You know, yeah. it's like, and it's wide enough to where you can aim at both uh, yeah. pedals effectively. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and uh, and it's the sound quality of it though is is better than most. Like uh, it, it, they focus on high quality sound instead of like a low def. Uh, with a lot of options, which yeah. I think is what a lot of um, uh, lower lower range loop pedals do, and you can really tell the difference. It's like the same sound after you loop it. As oh, that's as great! What, what you put in there, so. is huge. That's that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah, the sound quality and the ease of use and um, T-Rex effects. I don't have it on this pedal board because it's one of the components I just use for certain occasions. They have a, a replicator echo pedal, which I use a lot in the studio, um, both in the mix process and in the uh, tracking process. Oh. And it's like an authentic tape echo unit, but in a foot pedal format. So it has the tape uh, winding in there, yeah. the tape cartridge, and really? it just sounds killer. It sounds so like rockabilly, so vintage. Sounds like that old like classic country sound when you want that, oh. like with the telly. Do I the mean, tapes hold up pretty well? They hold up really well, oh. yeah. Even when you you max them out, they sound even cooler yeah. <laughs> after a little while. <laughs> right. but, but they also sell the cartridges and you pop it in like a tape cassette, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's super easy to change. You don't need to be a, an engineer to use it or anything. And I mean, it's like the sound is authentic. It's got that, that kind of like, I don't know, Pink floyd -y vibe a lot of times, you get that really nice saturation. How like, cool. And, and then the API, what? Yep, the API transformer pedal. That is like the, um, that does all the stuff that's subtle that you really want to have happening. Um, it's uh, like uh, everything's running through that at all times, basically going to the amp. Um, if I bypassed it, you might not notice a whole lot. And I don't have the tone or compression on right now with what I've been doing, but here's with it off. And then just on, and this isn't even, this is just going through it. This isn't even touching the tone 
or the compression. Um, again, this is off. This is on. So it just wakes it up. Yeah. It's got um, the same op amps, the same circuitry you'd get from an API channel strip. So it's basically like running through an API analog console channel strip, but just in a pedal board. So it's kind of like the mastering phase with the tone before it hits the amp. Also, if you don't have boosts, if you don't have anything like that, um, you can control how hard your guitar hits the amp, but it's like your guitar tone with some of that analog beef uh, just hitting the amp really nicely. Sure. And then it's got an EQ section, which um, they've got a bass version and they've got a guitar version, and the EQs are the only thing different about them. And uh, so, you know, sometimes you're in the studio and your amp's in another room, you can control the tone from the pedal board, which That's is nice. That's huge, yeah. And so you just want a little more mid, boost the mid on the pedal, and you don't even have to be around your amp. Because so that whole studio thing, when your amp's in the other room, by the time you go over there and you know, tweak it and you come back, put in your headphones, it's like, nope, still don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah the... Well, one of the other things, like when I can't do that or if I need to change the amp tone and it's the other room, I use the image looper because the sound quality is good oh. enough to where I just loop the riff that I want to play, like, you know. <laughs> and then it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be annoying to go over and over, but you know what I'm saying? Yo. Like, play the riff that you're setting your tone to. Walk in the other room, let that play back, and you can hear the amp and control it, and then... That's a really clever pro tip, yeah. So even when I'm, you know, not using a loop pedal, I like having it for that reason. Right. right. Just the control you get. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's a great idea. And then um, the other thing on the transformer is you get compression. So it's got a really subtle compression. You know, API's compressors are really transparent, but they're they're good. They, they bring just everything out a little bit more. And so, you know, here's without the compression. And then with it, just got to hear the little details. Sure. It's those tails of the notes, you know, if you boosted the compression up higher. Yeah. Just a little bit more. I like the lower settings because it doesn't start eating away at the transients, like the attacks. Yeah. But sometimes a little bit of compression in there will be nice, and it, sure. it also reacts differently depending on how you hit it with the gain knob. And then it's got a volume, um, basically, uh, trim at the end, so you can, you can hit the amp at whatever volume you want, whatever your gain setting is set to on there. And so I guess it's just like the mastering phase is what I think yeah. about that pedal as. So this board in front of the amp, and then this board over here, the second board, is run through the effects loop? Generally, I'll run that through the effects loop. Right now, it's not. Um, but, and what, and what's, the, what's all on this? So this, um, this one is all the, like, Universal Audio just came out with these three pedals, and it's like, as soon as I saw them, it's like, these are the things I do post-production a lot of times in Pro Tools. I'll use a lot of the Universal Audio plugins that do the same things. Yeah. And so having them here in pedal form is, is like, I'm so glad they started doing this. Right. And they sound killer. And, and you know, they're really known for their, like, emulations oh. of analog gear. And so... Right. Like, the most expensive analog gear ever yeah. at, you know, at mere mortal price. And, yeah. and you don't have to deal with the, um, the repairs you need on uh, great old analog gear. Like, yeah. if you really had a tape machine... And like an Echoplex, like all these different things that like old like vintage tube, um, you know, vibrato, yeah. which like you need to have an amp that has that built in to, to get it. But with this, you really get like a nice tasteful, you know, here's the vibrato, uh, no vibrato. And then here's just a little subtle. No, I, I probably went too subtle on that. <laughs> that was my preset. You know, tap the tempo if you want. I just like that little hint of it, but sure. you know, of course you can, you can, uh, uh, there we go. Yeah. 
That yeah. sounds great. It sounds good. You can control the stuff like the oscillation, the, the, the type of echo unit that you're emulating, whether you want it to be like the um, more of like the, the better digital ones, like the vintage digital ones sure. or the vintage tape, anything like that. And then same thing with the uh, reverb pedal, which I like spring reverb. I like, you know, I play a lot of amps like the Hughes and Kettner that don't have spring units built in. Yeah. But um, I started on Fender amps, and that was one of my favorite things about them was like the vibrato oh. and the spring reverb. And so, you know, you can really, um, really get a good spring reverb. Yeah, so, we get hooked on that And that squishiness and everything. Uh. Plus it has a, a pre-delay, which you never get on a, um, on like a spring unit. And so it, it helps that attack poke out there just right. And you right. still get all that squishiness. It's just not getting in the way of your notes. Yeah. And like pushing you back in the mix, you know? Yeah, I could so. see where that'd be very addictive, that, that vervy tone. Oh like yeah, that. definitely. Turns all my bad stuff into good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all my bad sustain into long, beautiful notes. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. <laughs> And I love like kind of surf and rockabilly, and so having the tape echo and the spring reverb, I can I can really dial into those tones whenever I want. Oh, that's great! And then your third board, and this is all part of the modular kind of exactly. Deal. And um, yeah, so uh, this board over here is basically if I'm playing live and I want like a lot of times just for ease of use when I'm playing the acoustic guitar, I'll plug it into whatever amp I'm running the electric out of, like a, a clean tube amp basically, yeah. and use that setting. I love the way that sounds. But if I, um, for like more of an acoustic feel and more of an acoustic sound, um, I've gotten kind of hooked on the uh, Fishman Loudbox. They're um, great and they're tiny and they're light. Awesome. I think I use the um, the Mini right here, the, the Loudbox Charge. Yeah. I use that amp more than any amp out of all of these because um, when I'm filming around like outdoors or, yeah. you know, it's, it runs off batteries and it takes pedals so well. So, you know, I can plug that uh, loud and proud pedal in plug it into the, the Fishman loud box, and it sounds like a, a Marshall stack or something if yeah. I dial it in right, you know, and, and it's, it's crazy how much it actually does. But, um, so I go to this, um, and then I can A, B it. So coming out of the pedal board, I can go to the, the tube amp, you know, or I can go to the, the Fishman. Right. Which then, um, it's also going through the Fishman uh, Aura pedal, which gives you more of a mic sound instead of the piezo sound. Because um, I don't think anyone ever prefers the piezo sound yeah. for acoustic. No one's like, he's like, give me that. That doesn't sound like a piezo. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. What's like, what that warm, sound? woody sound? Yeah. We don't like, want that. They definitely don't want the sound of feedback from a microphone. <laughs> you know? So it's like, you know, you just deal with the piezo sound. But that's a great pedal for just. Um, you know, you go through before the show um, in the room on stage, and I just pick the setting that sounds the best on the guitars I'm planning on using, and and just so when I when I hit that and I switch the routing, instead of going to the electric amp, it goes into the um, Aura pedal and then into the acoustic amp, and the acoustic amp I I kind of think about that as a DI more than an amp. Sure. So it's like a DI attached to a stage monitor. Yeah. And yeah. so like I don't have to worry about anyone else controlling my. Um, my monitor level, especially with the acoustics with feedback and stuff. So oh, right. I'll just turn it down myself. The master volume doesn't affect the um, the send volume. Oh, so the so it's just, front of the house isn't like, you're killing me out Yeah, here. yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. so it just it's just your personal volume for yeah. where you're sitting or standing. And it's I love that uh, ease of use about it. Yeah. And uh, it just fattens it up. It gives you EQ. It gives you some nice reverb options. And I never use chorus, really, but it, it has great chorus on it, too. Yeah. So, so I, I'm sure it all depends on the gig, but how many guitars do you usually carry to, to uh, solo performance? Man, you know, again, too, you know, talking about when, um, when I lived in the RV, you know, yeah. like a, the little repo RV that we, <laughs> yeah. that we bought, I had like 30-plus uh, guitars in there at one oh, point God. and an upright bass. And like it was ridiculous. And a very and like, understanding a wife. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone built me an upright bass that was made out of a bicycle, and a, and, and like we had that uh, bungee tied to the shower curtain. Oh yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but you know, normally if I'm if I'm driving to the gig, it'll be a lot different than if I'm flying. Yeah. Um, but uh, I like to have you know at least four or five, but ideally maybe a dozen guitars for the show. Yeah. Part of the fun of it too is is like, 
the part of the show is is seeing all the guitars yeah. and kind of experiencing totally. what is cool about the different ones and you see this one you're like oh when's he going to play that one or something like that right. or what that one sounds like and, and as a guitar nerd it's just fun to watch i mean like it like you, you go to a bonamassa show and you're like oh man that telecaster is so different it's like a from museum that. yeah yeah you know, and, and, and it's part and, of the show and you can see what you can actually you know see what you're what you're listening to see yeah. the different the different tones so. and someone who appreciates it like that too and and kind of builds up a, a following of people who like hearing about them and appreciate it with them yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's a great part of it. Yeah. And it's not necessary to enjoy the show, though, if you don't care about it, too. Yeah, just yeah, like, exactly. And yeah. the stage looks better with 12 guitars on it, too. It's yeah, like, obviously. Especially as a soloist, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. justifies the big stage, you <laughs> yeah, know. It's like you yeah. have enough guitars to fill yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Justin, hey, man, it was just great hanging with you. Thanks for yeah, inviting too, us into your place. and. And this show and tell is just killer. Awesome. Well, hey, man. Till Thanks. next time. Yeah. Cheers. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>